Good evening, everyone. Welcome. This is information regarding the visual and performing arts departments, uh, AP and IB level coursework. And the first thing that you'll see on the screen right here is a series of contacts. So in case you need to contact any of the teachers on this list, feel free for AP music theory. That's Dr. Balfour. For art history, Ms. Spear. And for studio art, 2D and drawing and IB visual arts, it's Mrs. Thomas. And these emails will also be throughout the presentation. And then at the end, I'll go back to this original page at the beginning, just in case you need them. So we're going to start with putting some information together on the AP Music Theory course. The AP Music Theory course is taught by Dr. Balfour. And normally she would be here to present this to you, but she's currently in rehearsal. Feel free to contact her at this address. If you have any questions regarding the prerequisites for the course or recommendations needed for the course. AP Music Theory does have a series of prerequisites. The first thing to uh, explain is that this is not a music appreciation course, nor is it a performance course. We have those courses in our catalog, but this is specifically a theory and composition course. So students are going to be expected to have a requisite proficiency in music prior to entering the course, especially the ability to read music. There may need to be a letter of recommendation if the student is not currently in the music program at Granada Hills, and that might include a letter of recommendation from an ensemble director or a private teacher. The course is recommended for students in grades 10 through 12. And the course content is a music theory course. There will be ear training, dictation, the ability to compose music, write a written score, musical analysis, the ability to read and interpret a score, and composition in specific historical styles. The AP Music Theory test is twofold. The first sections are multiple choice. There are multiple choice questions on a score, usually a classical score, that a student is being asked to read and interpret and answer. The second portion of the multiple choice will be oral examples. Students will listen to a section of music and then they'll be asked a series of questions on what they have listened to. Then there's a free response section and this is largely recorded. This will involve sight singing. The quality of the singing is not scored. Melody dictation, harmonic dictation, harmonizing a melody and realization of figured bass. So those are the standards that students will meet when they take the AP exam in May. I'm going to take you through the AP Art History course. And my name is Ms. Spear. You can see my email right here if you have any questions about the course. And this is just Disney's love of some, one of the artworks that we study in class, which is Fragonard's The Swing. It's a Rococo artwork from the 18th century. The AP Art History class is 250 representative artworks ranging from 30,000 BCE to the present day, roughly to about 2010. So we do 250 representative artworks in these categories. It's a global class, so we'll be studying artwork from a variety of different societies. And you can see some of them right here. So we go through global prehistory, Mexico, China, India, into Central, Western Asia, the Pacific Islands, and global contemporary works from throughout the world, roughly from about the year 1983 to the present. We do a variety of works in a variety of different mediums. We'll have painting, sculpture, metalwork, textiles, clothing, ceramics, so there will be a variety of different things in a variety of different cultures. We'll have work from Korea, Japan, New Zealand, Australia, the Solomon Islands, Hawaii, European works, and of course, Greek and Roman works as well. There is no prerequisite for this course. It's open to any student in grades nine through 12. 
The goal of the course is to teach students the ability to analyze an artwork, so there's no need for any prior knowledge of artwork. If the student does, that's terrific, but it's not a requirement prior to entering the course. They will learn those skills as they go through the course. The course is also a preparation for AP level history coursework. So for those students in the class right now who are ninth graders, when they leave the AP Art History class, many of them will make the decision to go into the AP European History course or the AP World History course. And much of the curriculum, especially information regarding historical events, what's taught in the AP Art History course will often be revisited in the AP level history courses. We do a variety of analysis. So we do technique analysis. We have a variety of works from a number of different societies. So this is the Lenape tribe from Delaware, and this is a bandolier bag, a representation of textile art. So students will learn how an artwork is created, why it was created, the importance of that work within the society, and how art changes over time. So we have two figures here. We have a winged bull that is from the uh, citadel of Sarban II, from 700 BCE, he's called the Lamassu. And then we have an artwork that was created in 2010. This is called the Subalua Afe. It's made of corned beef tins and it's by the New Zealand artist, um, Michael Tofre. So there's a lot of analysis of art, how artists create their artwork, the decisions that they make, the artistic choices that they make, the subject matter that is the center of their work, and how different artists influence each other over time. Here's a variety of the artworks that we study. So these are individual videos on each one of the 250 artworks that we do. Unlike prior uh, AP art history courses, we know exactly which artworks we teach. And so we can let students know ahead of time that these are the areas that we're going to focus on and the particular works that we're going to focus on in each geographic area. And then there's a film that takes students through the information on each area. Throughout the course of the class, we do a lot of in-class discussion, writing, uh, analysis, and practical work. But this is not a practical art course. So this is not a course where students are going to learn how to do a particular technique. They'll understand the technique, but they'll actually go to other classes to learn the practicals of making ceramics or working on painting or drawing. And that takes us to our studio level AP coursework. So we have AP drawing, AP 2D studio art. These are two different AP courses. So it's possible for a student to take two levels of AP studio art. We also have an IB visual art one and two course as well. And Mrs. Thomas is our instructor. So you can see her email right there at the bottom. This is also a particular type of course that does have prerequisites. Many students are going to start by taking drawing courses, maybe in ninth grade or 10th grade, moving on to advanced art. If a student wants to, they can start drawing in their ninth grade year, advanced art in their 10th grade year, move to AP drawing in their junior year, and then move to AP studio art, which is often painting techniques, um, into their senior year. To know whether or not you can be approved for an AP level studio art course, the best thing to do is contact Mrs. Thomas directly. Students will be asked to present a portfolio with representative works so that she can best assess their placement within our art programs. So students should submit samples of their work and the expectation is that they can do the following. They understand the concepts of linear perspective both single point linear perspective and two point linear perspective, that they can do observational studies, specifically still lives, that they understand color mixing with paint, and that they understand different lighting and shading techniques, chiaroscura, including naturalistic techniques with an identifiable light source, using graphite, pen, charcoal, or pastels. And you can see some of the examples of representative works that students would do. So this is an example of the ability to color mix, the ability to understand observational still lifes, and the ability to create effective lighting techniques. If you have any questions about the quality of work, 
and the expectations of the work, just feel free to contact Ms. Thomas and she'll let students know the expectations. Unlike other AP Art History courses, the AP Studio Art courses don't have a multiple choice section. Students are expected to present a portfolio, which will then be assessed by a series of professional artists. Now, if you have any questions about any of the AP coursework, feel free to pop your question into the chat screen. I'll answer them to the best of my ability, but I'm going to put up here the contact information just in case you would like to contact any of the teachers directly. And thank you very much for coming. Inside the chat screen, you'll also find a link to the AP form that will be available at the conclusion of AP night. And again, if you have any questions, just feel free to pop them in the chat and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Thank you. Um, after AP Art History, students have an they have a choice. They can do AP European or AP World. Um, both of them are equally good and the, the teachers who teach them are excellent. Uh, it depends upon what the student would like to focus on. So if students are more comfortable with European history, then their focus would be the AP Euro history. If they would like a much more global curriculum that would include the Americas, uh, Australia, Asia, then they would choose the AP World Program. The prerequisites for Studio Art 2D, the best recommendation is to have a series of sample artworks that you can show Ms. Thomas, and she can determine whether or not you're ready for that particular course or tell you which course would work best for you based on the skills that you've been able to present. So she may recommend going into the AP drawing course, or she might recommend taking the advanced course in preparation for entering into the AP courses. It's dependent upon your particular artistic abilities at this time. Would it be okay to take a summer drawing class and then take AP drawing? It's possible. What you would like to do is at the end of that summer drawing class, you do want to make sure that you have a series of works that you can present to Ms. Thomas and she can help you determine the best uh, art program to go into at the beginning of the school year. Yes, you can reach out to Ms. Thomas in the summertime. Um, there's always the possibility. I would actually contact her now and let her know your intent. And then she can uh, communicate with you about the best way to show the work that you've done during the summer, how to present it to her so that she can make the best assessment. Is there a photography class or any art classes that cover that? My recommendation is if you would like to do uh, digital photography or standard photography, that you actually contact Mr. Mazur. So I'm going to put Mr. Mazur's email address into the screen so you can contact him. And Mr. Mazur works with uh, digital imagery, yearbook, and American images. So if you contact him, he might be able to best help you with photography. Do you recommend taking AP Drawing first than AP Studio Art? Uh, yes, that's the usual sequence. However, it's best for you to contact Ms. Thomas. If you are someone who's always worked with painting and you're not a draftsman necessarily, then maybe you would feel most comfortable in studio art as opposed to drawing. It's what your focus is in your artwork that will probably be the best determiner of exactly where you get placed. 